Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a full first story arc comic book review of Echo Lands, issues number one through six, brought to you by Rated Comics. To me, if you like Harry Potter, you're going to like this horror sci-fi adventure with a little bit of gore to it. If this is your first time here, you know what to do. Timestamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue. Also, link in description if you wish to purchase any of the comic books in this review. Support the art, support the industry. And with that being said, let's get to it. We begin this issue with this girl in the red hood. She narrates that she was born into a simple family and she was provided a simple life in her simple cottage that her father simply built with his own hands at the edge of Mythwood. She gets into details about how her parents loved her and adored her until she fell into the red. She ran, but she could outrun the red. It led her here to this thing, this man and his people, and all the rage and death of our shared past. We get all this build up in this monologue as we get to know her as a character. And she says she waited a long time for this killing blow. Killing blow, it looks legit. With the fire flame tip arrow to this guy, it's not clear what she stole here. What is clear is she is told to stop and wasn't expecting the attention. It's interesting to format the art in this comic book in this landscape kind of way. I love how it shows how she maneuvers in the crowd to get away from the person who she stole from. Not to mention it's a sort of world building that you get to see the entire uh, layout of the world. And it's very interesting and very compelling as well. And just all over the place, but it's just nice to look at. She slides her dagger on this bird cage, unlocking these birds to slow this guy down who is pursuing her. I don't know about you, but I'm getting mystical Aladdin vibes up in here. Hope, also known as Red Hood, meets with Kor at the rendezvous and he knows she did something. Just a bit of fun, she responds with. You can tell with these two, this isn't their first mystical rodeo. Kor tells Hope that she's got these people pissed off. Screwing around time is over and it's time to take the shortcut. It seems that they're escaping hit a snag as this wall was not there before. She knows the lay of the land and Kor reminds her that you can't trust these alleys to keep their shape for more than a few days. The wizard coppers, that's what these wizard police are called, catches up to them and puts them under their mystical arrest. Cornered, wizard coppers inform what happens to thieves. Terrell's Desmond, this sounds like a bad mofo right here. I imagine we'll get introduced to him later, has them cut off the thief's hand and burn a capital T on their face as punishment is about to start and set an example you do not steal from this guy. There is more to Red Hood than we, we know. They know something is up and we get this beautiful illustrated mess right here. Yeah, that's just, you just have to take it all in. After that happens, Cora tells Hope we need to go. And it seems like what she did to him just did like a physical, power drain and just drains her physically and it's time to go core carries her up out of there and you just got taking all this illustration here as well now this whoever this person is we know later that this is Terrell's desmond's daughter she tells the police or the captain to spread out and she immediately lets her authority be known when he she when the captain says right away she tells him you do not need to speak to me Terrell's comes out in this egg looking and it forms and it gels into his face like where's my gem so now we know that red hood stole the gem but desmond's daughter is more interested onto what this girl, little girl's ability it doesn't matter desmond tells her i want this gem found find her and get my gem back so an interesting when you look at the art she takes her eye tells the eye to hunt the dna and the eye scatters around town and goes and finds red hood upon finding red hood she lets her presence be known kill the others and cripple the one in red and this lady means business and it's an all-out party and i got to leave a little meat on the bone here with you guys this is a short and fantastic read Echo Lands number one is a blast of immersive, fantastical originality. It has an engaging story at its heart that could go in any direction. And I personally feel this is a very ambitious book that has all the makings of becoming a very popular TV show and or cinematic franchise. That's just my personal opinion from some dude on the internet. And I love how in the end we get left with this cliffhanger. Well, this ain't really the cliffhanger, but when she tries to do the same thing with the guy before in the beginning of the book to Desmond's daughter, it doesn't work on her because she's all magic. And we get this beautiful written cliffhanger here that talks about what is to be expected with issue number two. 
And that's all we get. And this book, you will not be disappointed if you get this. This is a 9.5 out of 10 in my personal opinion. With that being said, we begin this issue with who Court is to Red Hood. Because in issue number one, we didn't get to know who he really was. He just showed up and started kicking ass. Core knows everything about Red Hood's past, but she knows very little about his. During last call on a drinking binge, he opened up about not remembering who his father was. All that he can remember was the, ba was the back of his hand. He wasn't angry or bitter about it, just heartbroken. It was their broken hearts that pulled them together. And broken beds and bed frames too. <laughs> You have any idea how expensive mattresses are? Long story short, he would die for her and sometimes she feels she deserves to die. We continue now where issue number one left off. Taro's demon's daughter caught up to Hope and demands she gives her father's gem back or she will do worse to her than death. Which is drag her into the street, cut off her glove and reveal her dirty little secret. Kor comes in to defend his lady honor and their bad breaking frames on her and hits her with an ax to the back. She's in pain and backhands him. That has to be one powerful backhand to make him go back like that. She tells Cor that she will put him in sheep's girdle for the rest of his days to poop grass. <laughs> Vampire lady, who we later find out her name is Rosa, tells him to run into the tunnels for escape. Cor lands a final blow while she's trying to get the axe out of her back. He is already a cursed man, he says. Boom, clobbers her. He picked up Red Hood and they get the heck up out of there. Core tells Rabbit escape plan 9. He asks, are you sure? And he says, yes, blow this place up to ashes. Just like Hope Red Hood taught you. He gets excited and blows this mofo up to ashes with Tarot's demon magical daughter still under. Look at that girl. She's just getting toasted. Back at an undisclosed location in the city, we see Tarot's demon looking. And he is pissed because he wants his gem back that Red Hood stole from him. And he's just making a comment like, if my loyal daughter's gonna blow up buildings, she better have found that gem. It's the key to excavating our past. So now we know the importance of that gem. Cool, I dig it. Now when they escape into the tunnel, the dynamic with everyone is interesting and really fun while escaping. Roaster starts off with the question of Core. Did you know she could just rip people apart? Call back to issue number one and where she could just rip people in half, but it drains her power, it drains her energy. Core deflects the question, reminds him that she saved all of our asses. This causes tension with the group as each one wonders if they'll be next to be ripped apart. Can Hope even control her powers? That's the whole dialogue here. Funny thing that we get to find out that if she didn't take that gem, none of this would happen. I mean, who does that? Core minds, and they weren't complaining when she was offering to split the take with them. They dialogue some more, and their goal is to find their way to the surface. Rosa believes Red is slowing them down, and she thinks they should leave her behind. Despite Core reminding her and the rest of them that the rules they all agreed to was no one gets abandoned. That goes for her, that goes for everyone in here. Rose is like, just because you guys broke some bad frames together on the regular doesn't mean she gets a pass. She brought that thing in and now the rules are changed. We're re referring to Desmond's daughter because that girl is just nothing to be messed with. Red Hood coughs and wakes up and tells the crew to stop fighting. Now back at the explosion, we see this little magical robot scanning the perimeter for survivals or whatnot. And he locates Desmond's daughter. She's like, stop wasting time with me. I'm fine. Seek, go find them. And the robot's just like, you know, going around, goes under the tunnel and starts doing his thing. Now, this is a really awesome dialogue here where they're talking about, how come you couldn't tell us that you can make people explode? And the is like, you know, you know how we deal with malfunctioning monsters on Horror Hill, right? We put them to the torch. And then Red is like, all right, you want to take a run at me? Go ahead, come at me, bro. You're just a bloodsucker. You want to see my power works on a bloodsucker too? They dialogue and they all should split up because, hey, it's better to split up where she only catches one instead of everyone at the same time where it's they're separate, you know? But Cora's like, look, if everyone wants to split up, we can do that, but we have a better chance of making it out of here together. Their whole goal is to get to the surface. And Red Hood is like, yes, our goal is to get to Treasure Island. Now, there's some history with Red Hood on Treasure Island that Cora reminds her about Romulus and Red Hood's like, look, he hates Demon more than he hates us. And Cora's like, no, he don't hate us. He just hates you. Now, they got to get out of there and they're finding their way going through this town to get out of there and make it to the surface to take a boat to go to Treasure Island to get it away from Demon's daughter because this girl doesn't it doesn't joke around now this is a really interesting awesome backstory where they come across this 
metal robot, not the robot that was searching them from Demon's daughter, but just that's underneath the tunnels. And it scans them to see if they're a threat, but they're not a threat. And it reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy where it's a creative way where we get introduced to characters and their backstory, but it, do, but it does it in a really creative, awesome way. This is a great read, this great character building on familiar, on new characters to make you feel familiar. Link in description if you guys wanna get the book, by the way. Now they make it out alive. Brad points to Core and the other crew. I think that's the Scurvy Queen. Let's make our way to it. But it turns out this pirate with one tooth has history with her and she's and and he's just like all right well you know what and then he calls back to her like hey you know i got one tooth for mash roots and grog but unless i could get some sweet young thing to chew my meat for me what do you want you little thief enough for the foreplay here she wants safe passage she's got no money and she's hoping that she would gr that he would grant her a favor he's not gonna bite for that no nah, last time i did something for you didn't pay and you never did you still owe me and Red's like, well, hey, then make it three favors. I already know there's no free rights here. But he'll do it in exchange for the Scorvia because that's the guy that knows that it blows things up. And it sounds like they have something very malicious planned with them. You give us him for keeps, we'll take you. Red is like, no deal. And then the homeboy's like, are you gonna make people blow up again? Then if you're not gonna give it to give him to us. And we're just gonna take him. Now that robot that scans in each of their backgrounds and their identities, he has this thing where he can't do harm. No harm, no harm. And they tell him no harm, but he sees that harm is about to be inflicted and his defense mechanisms just go off. Now I got to leave a little meat on the bone with this book and keep in mind, Demon's Dog just catch up to him, but it's, it's, there's more to it and this book is, a mystical car it takes you on as a passenger and you discover in a whole new world in a whole new strange way and strangers in the land and it's in this very strange but very cool way i'm starting to accept the landscape part of the book because the more i read this book when i reread it i tend to find things that i missed the first time around or the previous time around and i dig it it makes it a fascinating read the final pages of the book are made up of this comic shadowy antagonist and this fortune teller this wizard fortune tale that gives you a preview of what the next issue is and it keeps you wanting more and you know what i'm looking for more before i get into this issue i'm gonna look back and see if i had something in my teeth i felt i did but what does it have to do with the review absolutely nothing in this issue we, we open up with uh romulus getting impaled and bleeding out and we see the hand of the wizard on her blade right there romulus is the person that hope red hood was looking forward to go into for safe passage in issue number two and we begin with this monologue with Romulus are you seeking redemption for your half-hearted betrayals or revenge against those who killed your gods I can't begin to fathom all the reasons you followed me here are you hopping to find some powerful weapon to help you wrest forth Rome away from your father I'm not sure what that means but it seems like it's a foreshadowing is something that's gonna happen in the future or are you here for immortality to have your name sung for eons to come or did you just want to impress me if we survive maybe I'll ask you why you'll tell me it doesn't matter and you just want to your bloody your sword or for some other nonsense but we all made sacrifices to save our dumb world, you dumb, beautiful bastard. I'm not sure if this is Hope Red Hood's monologue with uh, Romulus here, but now we begin with deep in the ocean, we see the scales and the Sargasso serpent in the water, because in the previous issue that they were getting attacked on the pirate ship when they were running away, Hope, core and crew away from the wizard wizard's daughter Terrell's desmond's daughter because hope stole the gem that could excavate their past now we see rabbit about to be annihilated or mauled or in the mouth of the serpent he yells out to hope help me so she swims to the giant serpent climbs up and the serpent submerges itself underwater because that serpent can hold its breath longer than hope. At least I, I'm assuming that. And she busts out like a flare and impels the serpent in its eye. And I could only imagine the painful scream that is being yelled out by the serpent as hope falls into the water, swims up to shore, gasps for air, and she swims to the shore to land. And she meets Rosa, uh, the, the vampire. And she's like, well, I hope you're alive because if you are, there's a guy and he hates me. And hope is like, I'm not alive. I'm just half dead. And and the other guy says me too i totally forgot his name but you can tell from him holding his midsection that he's injured and they ask have you found a rabbit they're like no what about core 
And Hope's like, I'm not worried about Cor. Seven of those Sargasso serpents can kill that man. And even if they tried, he'll just end up with the cold. Homeboy with the wounded midsection points. We see Cor. Cor is at shore and Cor tells Hope, I tried to save Rabbit. I tried to save him. I'm sorry. You can tell he's like exhausted, but we lost him and he hands over Rabbit's goggles. Cor tells Rabbit, it's okay. It's not your fault because Hope feels like it's her fault. Rose is like, the hell, it's not her fault. She's the one that stole from the wizard. She got the entire crew slaughtered. You know what? Now we're on Romulus's treasure island and we should barter with him for safe passage by turning her over to him. And Cor is pissed like that. Like, Rosa, don't you make me stake you. And Hope tells him, hey, you guys can always swim back to the city. And they're like, really? After, after what's in that water, you think you want to swim back to that city? This guy is bleeding out. And then wolves are lurking behind in these bushes. They're like, I, I knew I smelled fresh blood. Let's kill the vampire and eat the bleeder. And the other wolf is like, later, we got to bring him to Romulus first. Now we get this globe ball tracking wizard pingy thingy from issue number two that's just going around scattering the island trying to find hope and the red hood and the crew the wizard's daughter and tara's desmond they're having a conversation and she tells him hey they were attacked by the serpent their dna has been scattered all across the ocean and he's like we must find that gem and we must find that girl and the daughter is like i don't need to be reminded of the gem's importance the pirate will tell us what we need to know i will make sure of that so he comments that her beautiful sculpted mask is ruined and the sculpted it saddens me that it's scarred like this let me repair it so she's like please all the cracks and scars are proof that I have lived, just like the wrinkles on your own face, father. She didn't say it to condescend him, but she's like, man, this is like a battle wound. This is street cred right here in the way. So she tells him, let me focus on the task at hand. I promise I will find him. I'll get back that gem. He's like, very well. You know, we have a guest attendant. He needs to be attended to. And she's like, okay. So she's going to interrogate the guest and she has this needle going into this gargoyle's eye. I don't remember what issue he was in, but she's interrogating him to find out all about Red Hope. Now on Treasure Island, we see Romulus. is sitting at his throne and he has a decision to make. And this wolf is like, this has been five times this month, Romulus. And it turns out we got these two people, Torch Grinder and Barnabas. They're arguing about the, the revenue of the casino and that he's not giving up all the money because if he gave up all the money. So there's some kind of business deal where all three of them are intertwined with one another and they need to work with one another. So Romulus comes up with this conclusion like your morons are costing me money. Here's what's going to happen. Barnabas, you're going to send your smartest coin counter to that casino and give them a lesson on how to turn a buck. And in exchange, Torch Grinder, you're going to assign some of his strongest men to work security at your whorehouse because you can't have customers roughing up the ladies. I don't want no more mistakes. And Torch Grinder's like, bro, I ain't got no muscle to spare. And Barnabas is like, and it'll be a hard sell for any of my accounts to do that. And then Romulus executes his authority like, okay, well, you both better find some volunteers or the next time we meet, it'll be so I can scatter your ashes. So now arms around the shoulders like, okay, we'll find some volunteers. We'll get it straight. And we always work it out, Romulus. And if anything, we'll start, maybe we'll start letting the crew gamble with gemstones. I know how much you like rubies, boss. And he's like, okay, case closed. Who's next? And the wolf is like the love of your life. And there goes Red Hood. So now we know Red Hood and Romulus had history together. And before she begins, she tells Romulus, hey, I was young and just a stupid teenager girl at the time. He was like, well, so was I, but I was a teenager boy. So Red Hood tells him we're in some kind of trouble because we're on the wizard shit list. And we're here because our man's wounded. He needs a healer. We need a ship, a sturdy one, and then last, and we can pay. And Romulus is like, what? Hope Red Hood giving up coin? That's never happened before. What makes today any different? So she lifts up the gem or what she stole and she's like, I'm a work in progress. You can have this, but the wizard wants it and he'll pay you for it. Maybe Taros will even let you annex the island. It'll be your own little kingdom, just like you always dream. So now she's flipping it to like, hey, give us a shit. We'll give you this. He'll pay you. He'll do what you want in exchange for that. Bromos is like, okay, but we will only get this gem after we are aboard our new ship and he's like okay well i'm we'll take you down get you sorted get your belly full and we'll and we'll fix up the arrangements you know so they get escorted into the infirmary by the wolves they think it's a trap but you know what it's not it's just we're gonna put you there until all this is settled and, you know food ship payment you guys are on the way on the run and a guy who had a pained uh, midsection, I can't think of his name. He says his guts are burning up and he's going to lie down. And while they're in the infirmary, it like dispatches itself into the water underneath 
and away from everything and we look like we see Terrell's Desmond's daughter about to land on Treasure Island and it turns out she is on Treasure Island and she's looking for the gem and the girl and Bromulus listens to Hope and tells her hey the island's free and clear those are my terms and next to island and I'll lead you to Hope and and the gem and she's like what you think you can barter she's like and he's like yeah that's how it works your master wants hope and the Red Hood and the crew, I have them. And simple trade is all I'm asking for. And she's like, it's all, the gem is all I want. Where is the gem? And Romulus tells her, it's with the girl and her friends are locked 10 fathoms down. If you do not meet my terms, I will send their sail to the ocean floor and you'll never find your trinket. So she's like, all right, I'm not going to play this bull jive game with you. So here's my counter offer. If you don't deliver hope in the gem, I will sink this city and everyone in it. And he's like, BS, you don't have an army big enough to take us all on. And her chest opens up and she opens up her chest and this egg comes out. She's like, I don't need an army. I am Armageddon. And in the infirmary where they're underneath this ball, underneath the ocean, she does this explosion and incinerates everyone on the island, not including herself because she's magic. Even Hope and crew are underneath this infirmary are like, dude, I think we're totally screwed. And I'm gonna leave some meat on the bone in case you guys wanna get the comic book, link in description. There are still a couple more pages left and the cliffhanger here is what actually happened to Rabbit. And when you do see what happened to Rabbit, you will see that how this story is going to continue and how this may play. Now the artwork is impeccable. Although the lack of answers in this issue, and even though we're issue number three, and I believe there's gonna be five issues in total, might be frustrating to some, you know, the art itself is worth it. And it's very entertaining. You'll have a fun read. And when you find out what happened to Rabbit, you will want to pick up issue number four. With that being said, we begin with the narration from Hope. I never believed in fate. And some unseen cosmic force guiding us from birth to death, it wasn't fate that dropped the wizard's gem into the palm of her hand. It was desperation, greed, and perhaps even cockiness. Which this is where the story begins in issue number one where she's just running away because she took a gem that could excavate their past and Darius Tesma sends his daughter to try to retrieve her from hope. And it wasn't fate that brought all of them together or led them to this place. It was a sense of violation. It was envy and fear and rage. It was her. We start off with the destruction of the island where Romulus hit Hope and her crew. They're inside this capsule tube and the destruction begins and the island falls down. Hope is like, the wizard's daughter, she found us. We gotta get out of here before we're captured or crushed. They see on the control panel, it's a shaped stone for a getaway. And Hope puts her hand to her chin, thinking, well, the gem I stole. Mutter a prayer, guys, because this, this just might work. She puts the gem on that key panel and the shuttle, the capsule moves and she's like, whoa, I don't even know what we're doing, but anywhere, anywhere this thing takes us must be better than here. And turns out she is not wrong about that because Romulus is on the island still dealing with the wizard's daughter. Romulus tells Torch Grinder, stay back. I'll hunt the wizard's puppet myself. And he tells Terrence Desmond's daughter, who's nothing to be messed with. You might think you're Armageddon, my lady. But I am a blessed demigod. I am a son of Jupiter. My armor was forged by Hades himself. And I will not let you do this to me. So he lists all these credentials of the battles he's won. The trials he went through. And I have fought from the pits of Urkron to whatever. And he's just letting us know his vast collection of victories here. So he swings at her. And it doesn't even phase her. She's like, you are a fool yourself. I am the daughter of Terrace Desmond. He forged me. I am the unbreakable weapon. I am the enchanted enchantment that can never be dispelled and she unleashes a little bit of her own firepower herself and i am so much more than the myth she adds now torch grinder comes in to be a loyal servant and save his master romulus from a beatdown but she turns around and slices his hand off and slices his midsection off too tells the brother i'll turn you into me now you see you cannot hope to survive me tell me where the girl and the crew are or else I will turn this island into Armageddon. So speaking of Armageddon, Romulus is like, okay, we'll turn this island into Armageddon together. So he collapses the island, turns into dust, and we see the after effect of this dust mushroom effect under ocean that's just closely starting to encapsulate the capsule that they're escaping in. And then Rose is like, well, that's hundreds of people who just went into the sea like that. Let's hope for the wizard's daughter is one of them. And Cora's like, right now, I'm worried about this thing holding together because this, you know, this capsule is kind of sus. 
So Hope tries to play with the controls of this capsule. Looks like we're at the mercy of this capsule because she cannot control it. And it's just slowly traveling underwater. And we're seeing vast discoveries, vast layout, world building, you know, all this kind of stuff. And they've never seen anything like that before. And Rosa being a vampire and all, she's like, man, I'm just sick of being underwater. I could use a little sunshine, a little sun right now. This is stupid. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Cashim, on the other hand, he's, at, he's trying to secure his one. He's like, man, I hope we get to the surface soon because... I cannot hold this together with my midsection. Hope tells me you have to hang on. I promise we're going to get you proper aid. It's all good. And as they go into the mouth of this statue, Castro's like, look, man, I'm starting to see the devil. We better hurry up. And speaking of seeing the devil, which we're going to revisit that later, they go into the, the mouth of the wizard or whatnot. As they enter and they get a lay of the surrounding here, they think they finally stop. And there's this devil, mermaid, evil looking thing that just looks at him and slashes her powerful tail on the window, cracking the windshield. And even Castro reminds her, look, I told you I saw a devil. So as the water starts gushing in, Hope tells her crew, nobody panic. When the water hits to the top, take a deep breath and swim for it. Follow the rail, we'll make it out alive. Cora's like, all right, we'll do that, but you gotta stay calm or else you'll drown and kill all of us. Because back in issue number one, when she gets into a certain state of panic, she emits this energy blast to just incinerated this other guy. You can check out the playlist at the end of this review if this is your first time here. Hope loses it. The mermaid, evil mermaid, monster, evil mermaid, fantasy fish grabs a hold of her. She loses it and she panics. And in a state of panic, she emits this energy blast. And not only this energy blast, it, it, you know, it helps her escape and it probably annihilates the mermaid fish, fantasy, whatever. It also removes the limb of this girl, Dina, part of her crew. And Rosa is upset about that when they swim up to shore and they get to land finally. Rosa's like, hope you have to answer to this. You know, Cora has to have his girl's back. Like, you know, you need to back off you don't understand and hope's like no of course she's right i do need to get a control of this and rosa you know what we do to vampires we can't control their thirst for for human blood we rip out their miserable hearts we send them to horror hill core is like look you threaten my girl one more time the crabs will be eating out your eyes don't do that again dina even despite her arm being blown off she's like hey guys i hear something so they follow the music into this path and when they get to there they recognize it's a plastomy music that's singing it's something that's known to them. And when they get there, it's this alien that we see, or alien wizard that we see in the, at, the, at the end of the other issues, who's just greets him and he knows they're coming, but his dialogue is as if, I'm not surprised to see you guys. It's just, I didn't realize you guys will all be so wet when you get here, so I would have brought you a towel if I would have known you guys were coming. This triggers him to know, okay, so you were expecting us. How did you know you were expecting us? Did you know, but did Romulus tell you? Pfft, no, Romulus didn't tell me you guys were coming. It was fate. They're like, we don't believe in fate. No, it was fate. And he holds up a little capsule that tells him it was fate. I spoke with her all the time. Through these, I have several premonitions and visions. And I saw that you guys were coming. And then these robots come in and start tending to Castrum's womb in his, in his midsection. And he's surprised, but he's like, hey, don't worry. These robots are going to take care of you. And Dina's like, I just don't get it. How'd you know we would need a equate? How'd you know? Didn't you hear anything out was said? It was fate. Fate told me you guys were coming. Have a seat, sit down, eat, get your bellies full, empty out your bladder, it'll be all good. And just to further establish that he knew that they were coming, he gives them a meal that's personally tailored to them. Core with this mukla, Castrum with this pizza, Rosa with human blood, and even Hope with orange slices and grapes, and Dina with her tailored meal. So they ponder how to get further away from this weather. Should we split? Should we not? I mean, the wizard's daughter only wants Hope, so we should abandon her. And are like, no, they come to the conclusion that they need to work together and keep moving together, but they don't know how to get far enough fast enough away from this wizard that we call Tar Taros Desmond's daughter. And th this guy is like, I know how to pick up the pace and take you far away from here. Now we still gotta deal with the whereabouts of Rabbit and we still gotta deal with the whereabouts how this story is gonna come to a conclusion. And I got to say, first of all, this book has amazing art. Second of all, I think Echoland's issue number four it's a great executed chapter in this wildly entertaining journey that mixes so many different genre ideas together that it's almost like you just take a paintbrush, throw some paint on it, splash it on the canvas, and it comes out beautiful. And it just comes together. Quite simply put, Echo Lands con continues to be brilliantly executed and an absolute must read and a fun read. Link in description, by the way, if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection.
We begin this issue with the monologue with Terrace Desmond just going ham, looking for his gem, looking for his daughter, looking for Red Hope, who took his gem. And in this panel, we see Terrace Desmond just maiming and murdering across all these different lands. Mercy, show us mercy. We need you. No. And then everyone knows that Red Hope is the cause of all this destruction and death, where this guy is like that freaking bee. And then Terrence Des was like, where is she? And she and he uses his smoke to strangle him and choke him around the neck to get answers. Where is Red Hope? Now, in the last issue, we left off with Red Hope and gang in the Metaphysicist Lair. Rosa, the vampire, is going through some treasures and wondering, when will the rocker be ready? Well, soon. Very soon, I hope. Well, how soon is soon? And what's all this crap or junk that you have over here? It's garments and stuff that I found throughout centuries of my findings. And I was told that one day they'll be needed. And here you are. And I like how this double panel with what's going on with the Hope and, and her gang with the metaphysicist in this, in this lair or whatnot. And also what's going on with Rabbit who was lost in issue number three or two, I don't recall, when they ran away on the ship and they got, you know, attacked by a giant serpent. And Rabbit can't swim, so he got washed ashore in this transformer looking like Landis, transformers looking like ro robot, looking like Optimus Prime. His name is Ryosho. So Rabbit gets carried on by him and he's like, where is everyone? I don't understand. I see everyone. I mean like people like me, not machines. Oh, well that's forbidden, you know? Ryosho's like to Rabbit, look, you are forbidden and the Bancho must decide your fate. What do you mean my fate? Well, you cannot stay and we cannot leave. So I can't predict how the Bancho are rule. Well, will they want to hurt me? Unlikely. What? We remain here so that we will not harm, even by accident or inaction. No one knows, and Rabbit's uncertain. He's like, okay, maybe I should have just stayed in the ocean. Now, what's more interesting to me is we get a panel right here of Rosa and her love, and her love and her husband, and what that means to her, and the mementos that she clutches onto and holding on to. That's cool. I, I get the love story that moves the story forward, but what's more interesting is. Rabbit on this Transformer Island that has to meet this guy Bancho. So is Bancho gonna kill me? What, what, what's gonna happen? And then Ryosho's like, the Bancho's not one, but many. We are very near. I don't know how long, but this will make. But they'll make us wait. Okay. Do you guys have any food? Cause I'm really hungry. Food. We do not eat. Well, I better find a way out here before I starve, says Rabbit. You understand what that means, right? If I starve, and <laughs> Ryosha just looks ahead towards his purpose to get to Bancho like we do not eat. So Rabbit, I don't know what you're gonna do, bro, but that's up to you. Then we get a conversation between Castrum and Dina about do they really need, why are they going through all this with Terra's death and Red Hope? I mean, why not just give the gem back so he could just let us go? Well, no, it's too late because He'll never let her live, especially that we know the gem means that much that much importance to him. And we know that the gem is a key of some kind. So now they're coming up with a plan where, where can they go? Should they fight? Should they stay? Should they go to a place? Should they hide? Should they abandon it or stick, or stick together as a team? But meanwhile, back in Rabbit in this other panel right here, Ryosho tells Hanzo that we must interface with the Bancho for the judgment. And Hanzo's like, impossible. The Bancho has begun a hard reset. No interface can be received. Can be received. Then what do we do? What is it? Um, Rabbit. And he's like, I'm not an it. I'm Rabbit and I was washed up on the beach. And they're like, well, that is not allowed. So Ryosho's like, so what do we do with it? Hanzo's like, okay, this query renders only zeros because there is no record of the past arrival to inform a better result. So in other words, they have no history. That was the last words of Hanzo. No precedent, so they don't know how to make this decision. And they can't predict how they'll rule. And they can't predict how the Bancher rule. Hanzo's like, I don't know, the laws greater good must prevail. But don't get too attached to this rabbit, Ryoshin. So back to Castrum and Dina's conversation again in this panel. Exchanges of back and forth where the safest place is to go. They deduce that the best place to go is to Horror Hill because it's made for monsters. It's the only place where they belong. And even though some people have some beef for Horror Hill, they have some honor that they have to honor that'll protect it from Terra's Desmond's and his destruction. But we'll see how that goes. So meanwhile, Ryoshin takes Rabbit to the Boncho. And he's right, they're not one. There are many. So it's like all these robots integrating, we are here, why are you? But every word is spoken by a different robot in fragments 
Robot one speaks we. Robot two says are here. Robot number three says what are you? And the four number four says here. And but they speak in one word, but each word completes a sentence. Well, so when Ryoshin tells them we need a verdict on this one, the Bancho was like, well, what do you want? And Ryoshin's like, rabbit, they're speaking to you. Oh, okay. Well, what I want is I want to leave. Well, then leave quickly, then go. But each word is is spoken by a different Bancho. Well, I can't swim i can't fly i can't disappear i can't astral project i can't teleport i'm kind of stuck unless you guys have a boat well we don't have a boat but you cannot stay you've been here too long and you must be quarantined because we don't know who you are and we have no data on you because we don't know but we stay here on the secluded islands isolated from all human forms of contact every moment you spend with us we learn more about you and we know you need food to survive. You weigh 42 kilograms. So as they're prologuing his, how Rabbit can get off this iron or else they're figuring out, well, this guy is kind of weak. He has no powers. The more we know, it makes it easiest for us, easier for us to kill him. So Ryoshin tells the Bancho to stop. Let us explain, do not kill him. Well, fair play, says one Bancho. The other Bancho like, speak concisely. We are sentiment artificial intelligence, right? Yes, in every reality they are. So in turn, it is in our, co in our code in the stars, is it that? And he explains his plea to let Rabbit live. Meanwhile, Core and, and Hope, <laughs> they're, 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 you know, doing some adult business. But in the meantime, during their adult business, they, they realize, well, instead of running, and this is more in one of those post-nut clarity after Core bus or whatnot, or actually Hope, sorry, in her post-nut clarity, she realized that instead of running away from Terra's desert, why not we just unite and fight? Because for every destructional path that he kills, there's at least 10 more people that will ban and unite to stop him. Of course, like, you know what? That is a powerful wizard that we do not stand a chance with going head on. You know that. So when they leave the room, Rosa's like, well, you must be done finally shooting dust core. <laughs> All right. So they want to fight, but the but here they have a debate because the crew wants to escape to Horror Hill. But the thing is, even though Horror Hill is certain death, but they know Dina's right. You know, the other girl from the previous panel talking to Castro because it's the only place they know they'll be safe. And turns out Rosa's brother runs Horror Hill, but as long as he sits on the throne, He'll be honor bound to protect us. But Hope was like, no, I don't want us to be safe. I want to be more than safe. I want us to be ready to kill that freaking wizard when he finds track is down. And how are we going to do that? I don't know. We're going to raise an army one pissed off victim at a time. That's what Hope is thinking about. So back to Rob Robot and his judgment. He learns a little bit of history about the robots and every story about smart robots ever told, you guys became killer robots. We don't know, but long ago, Bancho decided that we would purge all knowledge of the outside world and live in seclusion here on Meta Maru Mountain. So they tell Rabbit, the reason why they want to kill you is if they know nothing about your kind, perhaps you will be defeated. Deactivated, disintegrated, destroyed. When we finally go wrong, we can't allow you to infect us. So there must be some other way besides killing him. So Ryusha started to get attached to this guy, to Rabbit. And the judgment is hey you can take him you can fly home but it's against all laws to let him die you know so Ryoshin, just to protect our kind if you take him you must never return never not even after your power core fades or your body rests and your mind is left adrift you, and Ryoshin's like i accept i understand i wonder why he did that so back with the metamorphosis sanctorum hope gives this wizard or this alien looking wizard the gem and he doesn't know what it is. I hope like, don't mess with me. I, I don't know what it is. And I hope was like, well, great. I was half hoping you offered to take the curse the thing off my hands. And he's like, what, and invite Tara's demon to tear down my sanctum like his daughter sank the treasure island from the previous issue? No, thank you. Meanwhile, in this panel, we see that Romola's from the previous issue when he explored the island, he lives and he merges from the water and he is looking for revenge. So in other words, perhaps Hope can recruit him to fight Tara's Desmond. So we hear all this, Ryoshin tells him, tells Rabbit a little bit more about themselves. Why did you do this? I know you live forever, but you're, but you're, when you die, your, your consciousness transport and you go into another body, right? But why did you take on this mission to take me home? Why did you do that? And Ryoshin's like, well, I suppose it means if I die, but to die on an adventure, that will be a good death. Now, Rabbit's like, okay, well, I just got to keep you from breaking. So we understand that Ryoshin did this because it's something new. It's something to venture. And if, if he dies doing this, it's a good death in his eyes. Now, we see this rampage that Taros Desmond is doing. And he's going ham looking for his daughter. Where's my daughter? Don't do this to us. You know, we're, we're Romulus' people, but we'll serve you. You're loyal to Noah. And he does some kind of spell, makes her head explode with meat 
crock pot soup with blood. We end the issue with him finding his daughter throughout the rubble. Now Hope is trying to get an army together. And it turns out there's a lot of motivation here because there's a lot of damage and destruction that was caused along the way. With Hope taking the dying, which we have a better understanding what it is, we know the key is it's the key to excavating their past, but it doesn't fully explain the story. At least I didn't get the full explanation of it. At the same time, a lot of exposition here, but this is an exciting and fun read in my personal opinion. If you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection, link in description. I think it was fun and I'm looking forward to how this issue concludes in issue number six when that does come out and I will be doing a review on it. So we begin issue number six with Romulus appearing and everything going south as Hope, Red Hood, and her team does not allow him and his ally, which has the gory appearance of a Frankenstein, on board their ship to get away from Terrace Desmond, his crazy ass daughter, because they hope Red Hood stole the gem. They're headed to Horror Hill, of course. The team is reluctant to let Romulus on their ship because they do not intend to take him to Horror Hill. But the members then agree amongst themselves that at the first sign of betrayal, they're going to kill Romulus. Plus, courtesy of the Oracle, he kind of gives them the nudge like, hey, you might need an army and he could be your ally. But at the same time, at the first sign, take him out. On the other hand, the Oracle stays behind, even though Hope tells him to come. The Oracle then reminds her that their ship can only carry seven people and not eight. Hope also asks him what he will do if Taros and his daughter come for him. He says that he will probably be killed, but it most likely won't happen because the Oracle manages to see everything that happens. Plus, the enemies cannot see the Oracle, which will save him as well. Another critical event we see is that the Oracle tells Hope not to thank him just yet because the mission isn't over right now. Hope replies that she is grateful for everything that the Oracle has done. The team then boards onto the ship, leaving for Horhill. One of Hope's allies asks him what the Oracle was about, but even Hope doesn't even know what the hell he's about. So they just brush it aside. Kind of a funny moment if you ask me. As the team settles into the ship, they take off for Horror Hill as Dina is flying the ship. The ship's control center combines with their bionic arm, which figures out a flight pattern to Horror Hill. Hope doesn't want to waste any seconds, so she even makes Dina skip the countdown of their launch. Screw that countdown, we gotta get away from her, because by the time you get to one, we might be one and done with this wizard and his daughter. The group leader is eager to reach their destination, and as are all the other members of the group, be careful what you wish for. They're just hoping that Romulus doesn't do any funny business while he's in their ship. Meanwhile, the ship blasts off and the team takes flight. During the flight, everyone shares their thoughts on everything going on. Hope shares her view that nobody knows where they are in the universe right now except themselves, which makes all of them accessible. The will to act free allows them to travel in such an environment which is all one could ask for. Castro remembers a stargazing on the rooftop with his sister while back in Chicago. With everyone sharing their thoughts, they were oblivious of what has to come next. As the squad arrives on Horror Hill, Rosa says it was a hundred years ago. There was gloom and the endless chill of fog passing through the entire land. The creaking, desiccated tree branches of the trees and the calling of the ravens. It's just eerie AF, man. It's sussy. Horror Hill's dark and gothic scene is so captivating to see as it instantly grips the audience. I mean, it gripped me, dude. I want to see more. Don't tell me this is the end of the first story arc. I need more. Styx is all welcome. Who welcomes Rosa with her official title, Princess, being put before her name? Okay, let's go on. Say less. Horror Hill is where monsters rule. Well... That is how Stick puts it. Rosa asks for her brother, who Stick replies might, he might be hiding in his castle. An army of the dead is unleashed, which the entire team then has to fight off. This is epic, man. They can also not return to the ship because their, their route has been blocked off. Rosa imagines that her brother has lost his mind with what he's done with the dead. When Hope asks her how to stop these creatures, she says she doesn't know because she hasn't seen anything like them before. With our heroes now in danger, who or what shall they turn to next? As the team continues fighting, the army onto them is more than they can handle. In comes Vaslov, who is the brother of Rosa, wearing the crown he stole from his sister. Everyone anticipates that he probably will kill all of them, but he takes off the crown, offers it to his sister in a fantastic and awesome turn of events. The words that he says next puts everyone in shock. He moves his hand forward, offering Rosa the crown, kneels and says, my queen, 
This leaves everyone stunned and Rosa doesn't know how to react. With the ending of the first arc of, the, of this series, Echo Lands, number six, we cannot, I cannot wait for the second arc to come about and what's next for this comic has to offer. My personal opinion, hey, if you're a comic book nerd, you definitely want to add this to your comic book collection. Especially, and if you do like Harry Potter, combining elements of horror, mystery, fantasy, and sci-fi, Echo Lens delivers a powerful punch that you will have that will have you on the edge of your seat. A better start would be to kick back things off with the first chapter Echo Lens. And since we're only at the sixth issue, you could probably reach here in no time. It's a quick read, awesome read, and it definitely keeps your attention. With that being said, Echo Lens, the full first story arc, issues number one through six. What you guys think of it? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you want to add any of these comic books to your comic book collection, link in description. If you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy and don't be stingy. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.